Hey y'all, I'm Earl Lenny and I'm a member of the New Orleans Regional Basketball Officials Association. In this section, we're going to go over legal guarding position, or LGP for short. The key to legal guarding position is being able to ask yourself, what did the defender do wrong? If he did nothing wrong, we cannot have a foul on the defender. It must be an offensive foul or a no call. If we referee the defense, we will know this answer. Keep this in mind as we go through this because it will help when it comes time to answer the question from the coach of, how was that a block? You must be in the path of the offensive player with two feet on the floor facing your opponent. You maintain it by moving laterally, which is side to side, obliquely, which is on an angle backwards, or simply backwards. You can always brace yourself for imminent contact. You cannot move towards the opponent. You also have to maintain your verticality by keeping your entire body inside your vertical plane. Time and distance are not a factor for a player with the ball, which allows us to establish initial legal guarding position anywhere on the floor short of contact. But we must give time and distance for a player without the ball, no more than two steps, which means we have to allow that opponent an opportunity to recognize and change direction before contact within his first two steps once you have set up your initial legal guarding position. And every time a player goes airborne, whether they have the ball or not, we can only have legal guarding position if we got to that spot before the opponent left the floor. You cannot move into an opponent's path once he has become airborne. That's why they always tell you that once an opponent goes airborne, you can't move. But you can always move backwards in this case, just not laterally, obliquely, or towards the opponent upon contact. I have a few examples here that show what we need to know about legal guarding position. Game. And the lead back up to seven as Shelvin comes back. Okay, so in this play, lead has to pick up the secondary defender based on our coverage and mechanics guidelines. He's going to referee the defense to be able to judge the legality of the defender. <clears throat> Black 20 establishes an initial legal guarding position. After white two goes airborne, he would have avoided contact with black 20 if black 20 maintained his original and legal position. He then changes his position to white two's new path and attempts to gain legal guarding position while white is in the air. By rule, this is not legal. Any resulting contact would be incidental or illegal here. This crash is created by the defense moving into the offensive player's path after he is airborne, so we have a blocking foul on black 20. Good job by the officials. Game. And the lead back up to seven as Shelvin comes back. Okay, so now I'm going to ask you to make the call. On this play... Does the official in the game make the correct call? Is this a block or a charge? Let's take a look and see what you think. In this third quarter. Yeah, she's now two of seven from the line. Quinn quickly the other way. That's, That's an offensive foul. That's number four. There was no question about it. And once again, no shock. There's Jordan Thompson, center of your screen, being focused on after a big defensive play. Well, Sherry did not get Quinn out of the game fast enough, so she's out there right now. And then a foul going to be called on Shaley Sherry. Four on her. Wow, how about that? Back to back. Okay, on this play, Lee does a great job of getting down the floor to his new position. He's going to recognize the secondary defender as he establishes an initial legal guarding position and then maintains it by moving backwards and obliquely. The shooter never leaves the floor and has the ball the whole time, so time and distance is not a factor. Offensive foul. Great call by the official here. Let's take another look. In this third quarter. Yeah, she's now two of seven from the line. Quinn quickly the other way. That's, That's a an offensive foul. That's number four. There was no question about it. And once again, no shock. There's Jordan Thompson, center of your screen, being focused on after a big defensive play. Well, Sherry did not get Quinn out of the game fast enough, so she's out there right now. And then a foul going to be called on Shaley Sherry. four on her. Wow, how about that? Back to back. Here's something to always remember. This play is a great example of why you do not have to be set to take a charge. 
The rule book says nothing about being set. It gives us a clear outline on establishing and maintaining legal guarding position. You do not have to be set to take a charge. All of this can be found on page 35 under Rule 4, Section 23. Every coach, fan, and player will yell that the defender wasn't set. Don't listen to them because you know that a defender does not have to be set to take a charge. I'll say it again. You do not have to be set to take a charge. Let's move on to the next play. They can have a guy that can be your leading scorer. That always makes that team very difficult to defend. Spinning and turning and scoring. Go to the okay, we're going to see here when White 32 gets faked out by the spin move. When he tries to recover, he's going to jump into the shooter. In doing so, he gives up any legal position he may have had. He stays vertical here, but his movement from point A to point B causes illegal contact. Good call by the lead official. Now let's take a look at it again. They can have a guy that can be your leading scorer. That always makes that team very difficult to defend. Spinning and turning and scoring. Need to take care of the basketball for Burl Bridge. Okay, so on this play, this is a pass and crash play. We're going to see the defender, when the ball gets into the lane, set an initial legal guarding position while the offensive player still has the ball. So no time and distance is given. He then maintains that position as the offensive player passes the ball. He may not have the ball at the point of contact, but since the initial legal guarding position was maintained through the sequence of events, the offensive player is responsible for this contact. And as we can see here, establishing legal guarding position is a moment in time. So as soon as this defender puts both feet on the floor and is facing his opponent, he has legal guarding position. And then it's on him to maintain it. So the offensive player has the ball here. No time and distance is given for this legal guarding position. Then he passes it short of contact and continues through the legal defender. This is an offensive foul and a good call by the official at lead. Let's watch it one more time. They need to take care of the basketball for Burl Bridge. 